Today I want to talk about upcycling glass bottles. Today's video combines three of my favorite things. Learning something new, making something really cool out of sentimental stuff, and free tools. Also, I've come up with a way to make high quality drinking glasses out of bottles that is fast, inexpensive, and consistent. The process breaks down into three basic steps. Cutting, grinding, and polishing. One of my shop buddies recently bought himself a bottle cutter. It's very similar to a lot of the ones you've seen on YouTube if you're interested in this sort of thing. Followed the instructions, cut my first bottle, and it turned out flawlessly. So I was hooked instantly and started trying to figure out ways to make the whole process more efficient. I even thought about trying to do it as a side hustle. I took a look at Etsy and on Amazon and drinking glasses made from recycled bottles sell for about $7 a piece. I haven't actually tried it yet, but that'll figure into the free tools part of this video a little later. All right, step one, cutting. My advice is do not buy a bottle cutter. If you've already got one, you can use it, that's fine. But if you've already got one, you have probably come to the same conclusion I have about their effectiveness. They should really be called bottle breakers because that's essentially what they do. They scratch a score line around the bottle, then you heat and cool it until it breaks, hopefully right along the score line. Turns out I got really lucky the first time I did it. After that, my success rate plummeted to around 10%. The problem with cutting bottles this way is that it's just not reliable, at least not for me. Oftentimes, I was left with large chips, or even worse, cracks in a bottle that would take a lot of time to grind out, or even worse, they could just ruin a keepsake bottle from a special occasion. The way I cut bottles now is using a wet tile saw. And I cannot stress enough the importance of the wet in the wet tile saw. The water using a wet tile saw captures most of the glass dust that's generated by cutting the bottle. I've cut bottles with two different types of wet tile saws. One is a basic seven inch bench top model that we had laying around the shop. It's made by Skill and sells for around $90 new. And we've put a $10 blade on that. I also found on Craigslist a top of the line professional 10 inch wet tile saw made by the MK Diamond Company and I bought a $70 blade to put on it. That blade is a 10 inch Husqvarna glass lock blade and it's top of the line when it comes to cutting glass, tiles or bottles. The blade by itself costs as much as a brand new 7 inch bench top wet tile saw from Harbor Freight with the 7 inch version of that top of the line blade. I'm glad I got to try both types of wet tile saw. And the 10 inch professional model is faster and it's more convenient. But the cut that it leaves isn't any better than the basic seven inch bench top version. And it costs more than 20 times as much new as the other saw. And it is definitely not 20 times faster or 20 times more convenient. The best bang for your buck really is the seven inch bench top wet tile saw. If I had it all to do over again, that's what I would get, brand new from Harbor Freight with a coupon. Here's a tip for using a benchtop wet tile saw. If you don't want to get soaked or have to wear a poncho or not be able to see out of your face shield, step around to the opposite side of the saw. That way most of the glass bits and water will be thrown away from you. You'll get much more use out of the blade guard and you'll still be able to see very well, better, the bottle that you're cutting. I've also found I get the best results by turning the bottle into the blade instead of going with the blade. I've never been cut or had a bottle break on, but it's still probably a good idea to wear gloves, definitely safety glasses, and probably a respirator. It's also worth noting that the blade used in this type of saw is very different than the blade used in a table saw. It's made for abrading rather than cutting. All right, on to step two, grinding. This step is about producing a flat rim that is free from sizable chips or cracks. It should leave a level surface with small chips and scratches that can be removed by the polishing process. Sandpaper can be used for the grinding step, but it cuts more slowly and wears more quickly than diamonds. It doesn't take long for diamonds to become less expensive than sandpaper. The best option I've found for grinding are eight inch 
diamond-coated electroplated lapidary grinding discs. You can find them online for as little as $15 a piece. I've bought a number of discs from 80 grit all the way up to 1000 and if I had it all to do over again, I would just buy one grit, the 240 grit. It chips a lot less than the more aggressive grits, but it still cuts fast enough to be way faster than moving progressively from one grit to the next with the diamond discs. With those discs, it's very important when going from one grit to the next to thoroughly wash the glass because otherwise you risk contaminating your higher grit discs with particles from the lower discs. Ask me how I know. You can, I effectively turned my 1000 disc into a really, really slow cutting 80 grit disc with just a few 80 grit scratches on the rim. Really frustrating. I didn't have to grind many glasses by hand before I started dreaming of a tool that can make the whole process faster and easier. And there are purpose-built machines for this task out there, but they're pretty expensive. So I came up with a solution that's a lot less expensive and is way more versatile. I bought the cheapest pottery wheel I could find on Amazon for about $120, then I added an inexpensive aquarium pump to it for less than $10 because again, I wanted to capture as much of the glass dust as I could in water for safety's sake. And then I 3D printed some accessories for it so I could grind flat, concave, and convex surfaces. And that would help me to bevel the inside and outside edge of the bottle as well. You can accomplish the same thing without a pottery wheel, but I think it's worth it. It makes the whole process faster, easier, and I think more fun, plus, if you're the kind of person that enjoys cutting up old bottles and making interesting things out of them, chances are you'll find a use for a cheap pottery wheel too. This brings us to the last step in the process, polishing. The goal of polishing is to remove enough of the small chips and scratches that you're satisfied with the surface that's left on the rim. If you take a look at Etsy and Amazon, a lot of those glasses have a frosted rim that's been polished up to somewhere between 400 and 600 grit. I wasn't satisfied with that because I wanted the surface to be as smooth as glass. And so I found a way to take the polish up to 3000 grit. You can do this with sandpaper, but again, I've found that diamonds are the best bet here. I found a set of seven polishing pads from 50 grit all the way up to 3000 grit online for about $35. Uh, they come in a set, and they're not in this shape initially. I cut them this way so that I can polish with them on a flat surface, a concave surface, or a convex one. And they work incredibly well. I couldn't be happier with them. So the three things I've talked about at the beginning of the video, I think we definitely covered learning something new or figuring out a way to do things. As far as making something cool from sentimental stuff, I've got this beautiful bottle from a special occasion. And I've got a number of these smaller bottles from a friend of mine who's aging his own bourbon. Hopefully, a decade from now, he'll have some, some special sentimental glasses that he can use to drink it with. You may be wondering how I'm getting free tools out of this whole process. Well, if you'll remember, I told you earlier that on Etsy and Amazon, a drinking glass that's been upcycled from a bottle sells for about $7 a piece, and a set of four is almost $30. I don't have to make many sets of glasses before the amount of money I would have spent on buying the glasses more than covers the tools and materials I used. And I was going to give the gifts anyway, and I got to make them myself, which makes them better. Plus, I had a ton of fun doing it. And I'm a wood turner, but I don't have a really good way to sharpen my turning tool. So I do the best I can by hand and with this grinder, which isn't exactly a slow speed grinder. There are some great tools out there that you can use to sharpen your turning tools, but they're pretty expensive. Honestly, it's one of the most expensive parts of being a wood turner. And I've got some ideas about how I can use this pottery wheel and these diamond discs that I already have to sharpen my turning tools every bit as well as the more expensive ones. So. If that sounds interesting to you, please stay tuned. And if you think I've earned it, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I upload new content. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you found this interesting and maybe even useful. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.